Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. In the following clip, you're going to see the dishonesty of the Dawa Ganda guys. You're going to see an example where Farid and his cousin straight up say that the companions of Muhammad didn't notice anything wrong with him. They never noticed he was having any symptoms of epilepsy. They then go on to say that none of his enemies mentioned that there was anything wrong with Muhammad's behavior. What they should have said was, yes, they thought he was crazy. And they were wrong. But instead, they straight up lie and said there's no such evidence anywhere. Let's take a look and see what the Quran itself records as the enemies of Muhammad saying. But first, I give you Farid. Now, do we have any narration that the Prophet has, ha has been witnessed to have a seizure uh, clearly by any of his companions or his enemies? We do not. I mean, they knew what, what seizures were. They might have not known what a focal seizure was, but they, they definitely know what is the difference between being normal and being in an abnormal state where you do not reply or where you lose speech or where you do start, where you start doing uh, weird abnormal movements. So okay. the prophet's so, so enemies you... did not witness him having any abnormal uh, states that are indicative of a seizure. Um, I'd like to point out something in regards to the points that you've mentioned about the lack of documentation of a seizure to the audience. Um, Non-Muslim audience members, and perhaps even some Muslims would maybe uh, assume that, hey, the Muslims themselves chose not to document this. Seizures occurred, but they didn't document this. I say that this is impossible. Because the early Muslims, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the early historians documented everything. Remember, these are the same people that brought to you the satanic verses. These are the same people that brought to you information about Rasulullah marrying Zainab. We, this is, these are the same people that brought to you information about Rasulullah marrying Aisha. These are the same people that brought to you every single argument that Islamophobes use and critics of Islam use against the Prophet, peace be upon him. So it's extremely, extremely unlikely that, what, a um, 100,000 companions would simply ignore seizures occurring. That's just from a historical point of view. Keep the companions aside. What about the enemies? I yes. mean, uh, the, if he was an epileptic person, they would have used that as a very good uh, propaganda against him. Yes, yes, you are correct. The Quran itself, the Quran itself um, often uh, quotes and preserves the arguments that are brought forth by non-Muslims. So they accused him of being um, a poet um, or uh, a sorcerer or uh, someone who is insane. However, they never accused him of having seizures. Exactly. So another point. All right. So I'm laughing. They're so they're so wrong. It's funny. Exactly. So they're saying that Muhammad's uh, contemporaries like never saw anything weird with him. Like they never. But we just saw a reference that they were like sending doctors, faith healers to check up on the guy. Uh, and we will see now uh, that in fact it wasn't just a few verses. They used the word majnoon, demon possessed, the one that could be synonymously, as per Islamic scholars, used for epilepsy, about more than ten times in the Quran, right? So these guys create this illusion where they lie basically to say that oh the contemporaries of Muhammad weren't saying anything weird about him. He straight up says they didn't say that they saw anything abnormal about them. But we'll see that they explicitly say that we saw the abnormalities due to the revelations, and hence we call them crazy. Uh, so they create this facade where they're now going to say uh, there were no seizures uh, or there were no secondary generalizations. Uh, they're acting as if there are none, but we have literally sections, and we will show you how wrong and how much you lie. You're a pathological liar. Let's go to the next slide.
it, it, it really does feel like he's when he's listening, he knows that this is wrong, but he's just not saying it. Now, all right, so now we're at this slide. So these are all the Quranic verses that mention uh, the word majnoon. I don't know if you can see them clear enough, but I'll read them out to you. 34 8, perfect. Has he invented about Allah or lie, or is there in him madness? Right? Uh, there's like a jinn in him. Is there a madness inflicted by him? That's what the worst. And we're going to go left to right, up and down. 44 14, they turn their backs on him, saying, He is tutored, he is possessed. The word here, majnoon, again, the same word for jinn, possession, as we talked about. 2370, we see, why do they say he is possessed? Again, he has a jinn in him or something. Has he brought them the truth and most of them hate it? And 68.2, now Surah 68 is actually the second Surah that was revealed according to many uh, verse, uh, hadith. Now in the second Surah alone, the second verse says, your Lord's grace does not make you profit a madman. So from the get-go, people were noticing this about him. And again, the word used here is ma anta bi rabbika bi majnoon. That you are majnoon, crazy, jinn afflicted. Some say muddled dreams, others say he made it up. Yet others say he's just a poet. Let him show us a sign. So he, a lot of times they would use the kahin, uh, crazy poet, as a synonym for a mad people. In 15.6, we say, receiver of this Quran, you are definitely mad. Like they were straight up calling him, you are crazy. Uh, that you are jinn afflicted, you're crazy. They are not the words of a poet, how little you believe in its continuation. Uh, uh, this next verse says, nor the words of a su uh, soothsayer, how little you reflect. In 37, 36, we see again, are we to forsake our gods for a mad poet? Lisha erim majnoon. Again, the same word. Uh, 6851, the disbelievers almost strike you down with their looks when they hear the Quran. They say he must be mad. Again, say the Prophet, I advise you to do one thing only, stand before God in pairs or single and think there's no sign of madness in your companion. He is only for warning you before severe, uh, severe suffering arrives. So he's again talking about him afflicted with insanity and jinns. And then lastly, in 5229, the top right, we see, so the Prophet remind people by the grace of your Lord that you are neither an oracle nor a madman. Again, Muhammad is being labeled as crazy. As explicit as the Meccans could have gotten in their descriptions, calling him crazy, the same word majnoon that Muslim scholars say can be referred to epilepsy. The black woman might have used that words as well. We come circling back to this. Now you tell me, was Farid... Uh, or his cousin saying that they didn't notice anything wrong with him. Was he lying? No, it's also it's also interesting that imagine God keeps telling you, you're not crazy. You're not crazy. You're the voice in the head tells you you're not crazy. <laughs> you're not crazy. <laughs> like, that's the craziest thing ever. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. So uh, why are there so many verses dedicated to Muhammad's sanity? Why did the people call Muhammad crazy from the get-go? Did they see his condition as bizarre? Why was he called a soothsayer or a poet? Next slide, you will see another interesting bit. Remember Farid's cousin said that they never noticed anything abnormal about him? In one of those verses, if you look up Tafsir of Razi 7184 and of Tafsir of 15.6, he straight up says, the prophet would be enveloped in a strange condition whilst receiving revelation. His face would change, become pale, and his condition would resemble swooning or fainting. And he's talking about why they would call him crazy. And he says, this is why, because they saw his condition. The people started seeing Muhammad having these seizure-like episodes. Due to lack of medical understanding, they could only assume jinn possession or madness as a possible cause. The conditions Muhammad experienced were definitely noticed as very bizarre by his contemporaries. Now that we've established that people did in fact see him in abnormal states and did call him crazy, and to a huge extent where it ended up being in the Quran so many times, you have to assume that this must have been something abnormal for the people to have noticed.